The views expressed on the following broadcasts do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT, Take 12 Radio, or our affiliates. The opinions on this show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice and are those of the host, co-host, and guest. Take 12 Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting are not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. And now, here are your co-hosts, Sandy W., Bruce H., and the Monty Man. Ow! Well, welcome aboard, everybody, all you scallywags and scallywagettes. Welcome to The Great Reality here at Take12Radio.com on your internet dial. Our email address is Take12Radio, that's the number 12, at Comcast.net. And Sandy is here. Hello, good. Sandy. Hello. Good morning, everybody. And Bruce H. is here. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> <laughs> and Stephanie H. is here. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Good morning. Good Good morning. And uh, Stephanie, this is the first time you've ever done something like this, true? Oh, yes. And I'm so honored I could practically cry already. Aw. No crying. Uh, out of joy, of course. There's no crying in baseball. <laughs> hey, now. I am just overwhelmed. Uh, well, we're, we're really glad to have you, and we hope that you, you have a good time today. Um, this is going to be fun. This is our Thanksgiving week show, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about gratitude uh, when we get uh, to the topics. But the main topic for this week is willingness. Willingness. And, uh, you know, sometimes people misunderstand what that really means. Sometimes they have a clear understanding. Well, we're going to try and be even clearer for all of you out there. Okay. Um, but before we do that, I want to make sure that you know that we also have a, a, a great addition to um, uh, our software, if you will, on the internet. Um, we are now members of Podomatic. If you go to take12recoveryradio.podomatic.com, you can download the app for your for your smartphone. You can download the shows. You can share the shows. If you sign up for Podomatic, you can comment on the shows. Um, there's just a lot you can you can do with that. You can get to all that if that's a little too complicated for you by going to take12radio.com. That's all you got to do. Go to take12radio.com, click on the uh, listen online button, and the show will start to play. There you go there. That's easy. Yeah, that's easy. I can do and that. And then you can sign up for all that stuff. Uh, there, which also means you can subscribe to our shows now through iTunes as well. Uh, for those of you who like to do that, all right. So um, I thought this was was kind of fun. Um, on the uh, online magazine thefix.com, this is an article by Amber Toza. Amber Toza. Um, Eleven ways to convince yourself you're not an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And, and and the 11 ways they, they they're prefaced by what we tell ourselves and then what usually happens so i'll be saying that what we tell ourselves i'll say it make a statement and then what usually happens i'll make a statement uh, number one what we tell ourselves i will only have two drinks tonight uh what usually happens you have two drinks plus seven more you aren't a liar you can't have nine drinks without having the first two. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, what we tell ourselves, don't go to a bar, stay home. Okay. Uh, what usually happens, well, you read a book for 10 minutes, but you can't focus, so you try to find something to watch on TV. Uh, when will they take friends off the air? You're sick of it. Ross has a gross voice, and Monica needs to calm down. Some would give that high-strung lady a drink. You turn off the TV, you look in the fridge for some white wine. There's nothing there because you drank it yesterday, but you already knew that because you've been thinking about it all day long. Pace the apartment, think about going for a walk, go for a walk. Oh, look, how convenient, a store. Buy a booze bottle. Uh, just one bottle. Take it home, have a drink, feel bad about it, drink the rest of it, make some drunken phone calls and feel good about yourself for reaching out to loved ones if you don't pass out. You might go get another bottle, wake up the next morning wanting to die because you have flashbacks of yelling or crying on the phone and flirting with the cashier who had dirty fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, uh, what we tell ourselves, eat a lot before you drink so you don't get drunk. 
Okay. What usually happens is you eat a cheeseburger, then drink a lot. Oh, no. Now you're drunk and full. <laughs> if you don't throw up, maybe you'll pass out early and wake up at midnight. The good news is there is still time to drink before you go back to bed. It's all in the timing. Oh, yes. <clears throat> uh, what we tell ourselves. I'm a social drinker. I only drink with other people to have fun. What usually happens, your definition of social goes from drinking with friends to going to a bar alone. And since other people are at the bar, you feel social. Right? That just makes that. sense. Uh, then maybe you start to drink before work or before uh, a casual lunch dates. And before you know it, social drinking turns into drinking anytime you are awake. Number five, what we tell ourselves. I'll, uh, I stopped for a month once. I can't be an alcoholic if I can stop whenever I want to. But what usually happens is this. You try to stop again. Maybe you're successful for a few days or maybe even a few months. But you always go back to drinking because you think since you can stop, why not start again? The problem is you are drinking a lot and sometimes you can't stop. Or you might even forget that you are trying to stop in the first place. Oh, my gosh. When you get to a point where you don't even care if you can stop because if you care, it's more painful. Besides, even though you feel like crap when you drink, it's not as bad as you feel when you're hungover. <laughs> oh my <God. laughs> okay, makes perfect sense to me. Oh, uh, this becomes a living hell and you are the only occupant. Everyone else seems like they're living a way better life than yours. <laughs> uh, number six, what we tell ourselves, I'll quit if it gets really bad. <laughs> like if I ever start doing hard drugs or going home with strangers. I've only done this once, okay, twice, uh, I'll, I'll never do it again, or getting into bar fights, and then I'll stop. Well, what usually happens is you change your definition of hard drugs. <laughs> I love that. Uh, from cocaine to black tar heroin. So cocaine is now on your safe list. The stranger you went home with ends up turning into a sex buddy relationship, and although it's very toxic and dramatic, it makes you feel like you didn't go home with a stranger, it feels like you've met someone. <laughs> and any bar fights you're in are not your fault. They're always started by the other person, or at least that's what you think happened. You can't quite remember, which is even better because knowing what really happened might be a painful truth you'd rather not know about. Number seven, what we tell ourselves, I'm not as bad as that guy. You'll right? Like that one. Right? Mm -hmm. What usually happens is the guy you're comparing yourself to is either a friend who has two or more DUIs, a heroin addict you see in a movie, <laughs> or a homeless man you saw behind the dumpster you were drink drunkenly peeing next to. There's always going to be someone who drinks and does more drugs than you and has three times the amount of problems you have. So you can forever be the one who is not as bad as that guy. Congratulations. And this is how you justify why it's okay in your mind to keep drinking and taking drugs. Uh, another hip hip hooray, your alcoholic way of thinking found a way to make you feel like it's okay to continue to be an active alcoholic. Imagine that. Number eight, what we tell ourselves, I'll quit after New Year's or after my sister's wedding or after some event that I cannot handle sober. And what usually happens is you change your mind to next New Year's and maybe since you didn't get completely hammered at your sister's wedding, uh, you all of a sudden think you don't have a problem anymore. Oh, and that one event you couldn't handle sober ended up being such a <clears throat> IT show. You had to drink to get over it. No matter what you do or feel or think about how bad your drinking is, your cunning alcoholic voice finds a way to drown out any common sense you might have. In fact, it makes you think that your common sense is the crazy voice in your head. <laughs> I identify with that. Yep. Uh, number nine, what we tell ourselves, maybe yoga and meditation will help. What usually happens, you go to a yoga class and, and sort of like it. You wake up some mornings and close your eyes and focus on your breath. And you think, hmm, it's hard to sit still because my mind is racing. But this is sort of cool. Then you go to the bar and get hammered. And oh, well, I'm meeting up with a stranger again. <laughs> Number 10, what we tell ourselves, I'll do a 10-day cleanse. I'll do a 10-day cleanse. What usually happens is you either do or don't do a 10-day cleanse, and then you go to the bar and get hammered, and you go home with the stranger again. And number 11, what we tell ourselves, I'll read a self-help book. Yes. What usually happens is you read that book, and you go to the bar and get hammered, and you go home with the stranger again. 
Uh, and then the author says, I don't think you had sex with all those strangers. I just like the repetitive nature of that edgy assumption. But you get the picture. No matter what you tell yourself, what usually happens is more drinking, more consequences. The good news is trying to convince yourself that you're not an alcoholic is healthy. Because if you're like me, you won't ever uh, get to the point of admitting you are without this phase. I had to t try to control it to understand that I couldn't control it. Interesting. It's a painful necessity filled with confusion, pain, regret, and if you're lucky, maybe a little bit of fun. Here, the hope is that you get to a place of so much pain that you finally ask for help. I hope whatever direction you take while you're trying to control it will lead you to a path of peace and serenity. And if you're sober, I hope you are enjoying that and not trying to control it. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Amber Toast. <laughs> I think I need one too. I heard a really, I heard a really cool def, uh, 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 statement about the word rationalize. Ration a lies. Oh, that's pretty clever. We like to ration a lie. And we ration it out and ration it out and ration it out. So are you rationalizing? Are you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we're going to take a, our, our first break and when we come back. Uh, well, let's see what we have when we come back. Don't go away. <laughs> Serene Scene Magazine is published for individuals who are seeking knowledge, support, and hope. Addiction is a systemic problem, and the content of Serene Scene reflects the complexity of putting addiction into remission with special attention given to the loved ones of the addict. And now, here's Andrew Martin, Editor-in-Chief for Serene Scene. I'm Andrew Martin, creator of Serene Scene Magazine. The whole purpose of Serene Scene Magazine is to help people help themselves to a long-term quality lifestyle of recovery. Please have a look at some of the technological features that it has the audio files and the video files that are incorporated into the publication as well. I hope you have fun with it and I hope there's something there for you. Serene Scene, a magazine for long-term healthy lifestyles of recovery. Visit www.serenescenemagazine.com and subscribe today. Men, women, and their families experience tremendous pain and suffering due to the struggles they face from substance abuse and its co-occurring mental health challenges. They need to find a safe place for peace and healing. Therapia Addiction Healing Center was born out of a deep desire to provide that safe and powerful healing environment. Therapia exists to help people recover from addictions by developing and maintaining healthy, meaningful relationships with God, self, and others. To speak with an addiction specialist, call 1-855-652-4325. That's 1-855-652-4325. Or visit our website at www.therapia.net. Therapia Addiction Healing Center. Restoring lives one step at a time. <clears throat> Monty Man, oh Monty Man, <laughs> yes. I see that we have someone very special yes. in the studio today. Yes, we do, Cecil. Well, don't be a horse's patootie. <laughs> Introduce me. Well, Cecil, this is Stephanie. Well, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. And is this your first time on the radio? Yes, it is. <laughs> well, pay no attention to Bruce and you'll be just... Fine. <laughs> now, Bruce, don't get your turkey feathers all in a flutter because I have a special turkey song oh, no. to share. All it's right. called Except for the Turkey. And here it is. Oh, Lord. Oh, boy. Oh, this is great. It's Thanksgiving Day, and we're gathered round. Little children make a joyful sound. And there's no school, and we get to play. And we're all thankful for this day, except for the turkey. La, 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 la. except for the turkey. Poor turkey. And now, it's time for Take 12 Radio's 
Turkey. Trivia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Turkey Trivia is brought to you by the 12 Step Gazette. <clears throat> Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, the 12 Step Gazette is an award winning recovery magazine for Philly, Jersey, and surrounding areas, and it is distributed uh, worldwide. And uh, there's re- rehabs, detoxes, helplines, puzzles, humor page, columnists, events, blah, 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 blah. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the 12 Step Gazette. And this is the holiday issue, and you all get one. Everybody in the studio gets a holiday issue of the Thank 12 you. Step Gazette. If you would like your copy of the 12 Step Gazette, go to 12stepgazette.com. <clears throat> All right, turkey trivia. Of course, if you get it wrong, you hear this. <laughs> All right, this is how we play. There's, there's uh, one, two, three. There's three trivia questions, and the fourth is a bonus. And what you get, if you get them all right, is a mystery, because we've never given anything away. <laughs> <clears throat> Except for heartburn. All right. So uh, this is a question posed to the three of you and anybody who'd like to play along uh, that is listening. Uh, Question number one. Benjamin Franklin was one of those who argued passionately on behalf of the turkey. For what did he want the turkey to be recognized and almost got his way? Here are your choices. A, to be a symbol of trust on currency. B, to become the national bird. Or C, to be the official food of politicians. National bird. On the coin. On the coin? What do you say, Stephanie? Food of the politicians. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good point. (laughs) (laughs) Bruce, you're actually correct. (laughs) I figured you would be. It almost became our national bird. I I happen to know that one. Did you really? Yeah. 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 I'm glad it was the eagle. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, trivia question number two. Turkeys have incredible hearing. They don't have an outer ear, but they have incredible earring, hearing. And they have superior vision. They also have the ability to do what? And here are your choices. A, fly if extremely scared. B, play dead when approached by cows. <laughs> really? Um, or C, C in color. First one. Fly of extremely scared? That's right. Yes. What do you think, Stephanie? I'm going to have to go you gonna, along with you gonna agree. on this one. Well, sorry, guys. <laughs> what? What? It's the color they thing, play, isn't it? They play dead. Baby. Yeah, yeah. No, they can see in color. They can they, see in they color. They can see in color. Yeah. I'll be darned. Yeah, yeah. So what? What's amazing about that? I can see in color. <laughs> but most animals cannot. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Live and learn. Um, okay. Uh, number three. Only Tom turkeys can actually do this. Wh- what? Only Tom turkeys. Tom. Boy turkeys. Boy turkeys. Boy right, turkeys. Can actually do this. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Okay. Is it A, walk backwards when it's raining? Oh, God. <laughs> is it gobble or is it hop? Gobble, 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 gobble. Bruce says gobble. <laughs> Walk backwards in the rain, gobble or hop. God, I gotta, I gotta say, walk backwards in the rain. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> it's so dumb. It's got to be right. What do you think, Stephanie? I'm really not very familiar with turkeys, to be honest. But however, I'm going to try the answer. I'm going to say probably um, gobble a certain way. Well, you know what? You and Bruce are correct. Sorry, I'm sorry. Really- there's, st- <laughs> I mean, uh, Sandy. <laughs> Uh, yes, it is gobble. It is gobble. Okay, here's your bonus. Number four. Uh, the turkey is a type of what? Type of what? Is it a type of peacock, pheasant, or vulture? Wow. Whoa. I'm going to have to say vulture because eagles actually are too, sort of. Eagles are vultures, yeah. Yeah, what but were the they're three so choices? beautiful. I don't peacock, like to call them that. Peacock, pheasant, or a vulture? Whoops, sorry. She's kicking me, so I guess I better yeah. say vulture. <laughs> you say vulture? You say vulture? What do you say? Bruce? I think it's a vulture, too. Turkey. Well, sorry, guys. You're all incorrect. It's pheasant. They're a kind of Good. pheasant. Yeah. See, Good. I led you guys astray. Oh, What's up with this? It's all you <laughs> <mean. laughs> oh, That was fun. The new host, and what does she do? 
I know. Well, that's it for Take 12 <laughs> Trivia this week. Thank you, Lord. Hey, Sponsored by the 12 Step Gazette. Grateful. How embarrassing. <laughs> all right, we'll be, we'll be back. You, we'll be back there right I was after in this. my business suit, all dressed up, just up tight as I could possibly be. And I don't remember much of what was said at that first AA meeting. It was more the feeling of the meeting itself. That's what has kept me going. I know it works, and I see the people ahead of me with more sobriety. I see how happy they are, and I want that. I want that too. And what I notice about AA is it sort of helps me to relax and learn to really be happy with my sobriety. It's a richer life to live. That's exactly what Alcoholics Anonymous does. It teaches us how to live without drinking. It teaches us how to have fun and really enjoy life without drinking. This program's given me the good life. The only good life I've ever known. Alcoholics Anonymous. It works. Look us up. Check your phone book, newspaper, or AA.org. Choosing a facility for drug and alcohol rehabilitation treatment is an important decision. It should be a place where you will be comfortable and supported, and one that is staffed, equipped, and programmed for successful outcomes. Introducing Free by the Sea, located on five acres of secluded waterfront property along the southwest Washington coast, away from big city distractions. The campus is a renovated resort property, so the grounds are lush and beautiful. Above all, the reason to choose Free by the Sea is the success rate of our counselors and staff in helping clients to transition to a life free from addiction. For more information or to schedule a visit, call 800-272-9199 or visit our website at www.freebythesea.com. Free by the Sea, charting a new course to recovery. That is a song called The Things You Never Gave Me by a Christian contemporary artist, Mr. David Meese. And David's been on the show uh, several times, and uh, he, he's just a phenomenal uh, uh, musician. And um, just to start out the show, before we talk about willingness, because this is our Thanksgiving show, um, we hear, we hear the, the topic gratitude a million times a year, and particularly around Thanksgiving time in our 12-step closed-minded discussion meetings. Uh, oh, Marty. I know, I'm terrible. Hey, it's my show. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Don't squawk at me. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, uh, we, do, we do hear the topic a lot in, in our 12-step support meetings, and, and, uh, and for good reason. Uh, we do need to remember uh, what we're grateful for. And, I, you know, I was listening to this, this song, The Things You Never Gave Me, uh, the other day. And I, I have to say, and I'm just going to take a turn. I'm going to go around the room and, and just pick something. But mine is, I am really, really thankful for the things that the good Lord decided not to give me. You know, we commonly think of well, the things we have, the things we've been given, the opportunities, the blessing, blah, blah. But I had to really think about that. You know, if I'd gotten everything I asked God for, even the things I thought were good, healthy things, um, I may have, you know, experienced some harder knocks than I, than I have already. I, I'm just grateful that God knows better than me and that he said no. So I'm thankful for the things he never gave me this year. So let's, let's go around the room real quick. Pick something that you're grateful for that you like to... Share. Um, I think that it's for me because of what you said. I think mine is just the opposite, you know. And and I'll tell you why. I'm so thankful for the blessings that He's given me because mm. now what I'm trying to do is live out of those blessings. Mm. I think that's the work. Okay, is to learn to live out of that, you know. This wonderful thing we call salvation or redemption. Mm. You know, these are the things we're living <laughs> out of those. Yeah. And these are the blessings he's already gave me. So if I can do that, mm. I think I'll treat you differently. Nice. 
you see, than I normally would. Thank you, Bruce. Very good. Stephanie? He's right. I'll just go off of that, too. I am so incredibly grateful because all my life I was looking for something that I could buy or work for or get, and it freely was given to me so much so at a place where I was completely not worthy of it right in any way shape or form freely given gift of peace and hope and freedom that i've never felt before in my entire life that i might cry i literally at it's this okay. point am so grateful for yeah. even the clothes that i am wearing because <laughs> i'm here today and not dead and i don't take today for granted anymore because mm. i'm not just being alive. I'm living life for the first time in my life, yeah. and I love it. And it's something, like he said, I want to practice and do every day. Yeah. Yes, it's Wonderful. awesome. I just, I'm overwhelmed yeah. because God loved me first, and my God is a God of love. Yeah. Loved me first and has set a great example before me on how to love others. And like Bruce said, I'm learning to have new eyes for people, and every day the Word is living and coming to life around me, Amen. and it's a miracle. Amen. It's not black and white anymore. It's 3D and color. Whoa! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Moving on up. Usually I people say you. it's not black and white, it's gray, but I like this answer a lot better. It's oh, 3D too. and color. Ooh, I love that. Ooh, ooh. I'm gonna it's put because that on. I see it that way. I'm going to put that on Facebook. I'll credit you, though. That was awesome. I love that. I yeah, love that. Sandy, how about you? Well, Stephanie, you made me cry. How do you follow that, right? <laughs> yeah, how do you fo- Well, you know what? I can follow that because um, I was given all of these gifts, and I've recently been able to retire, and what that has done for me was, you know, God's allowing me to sit right here today and in, and listen to Stephanie. Um, mm. he's allowing me to go out to Oak Creek and work with some young gals. He's allowing me to do all the things I wanted to do but couldn't because I lived so far out and I was working. So mm-hmm. I'm getting all these blessings today and being a part of this, and it's really something. Yeah. Bring yeah. your mic down just a little bit. There you go. <clears throat> well, that's great, you guys. Good. Good. Wow. 3D and in color. Yep. Come, 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 come. <laughs> and guess what? It smells good and tastes good too now. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, I amen. I don't stink so bad. <laughs> that's good stuff. Um, good smell speak like. the truth, sisters. Hey, I did truth. smell like a hangover. <laughs> it smelled like a hangover. Now I'm showing up for the party and it's I, real. Wow, Life. that's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Well, okay, so going into our, to our main topic for, for this week, willingness, willingness. And uh, I'm just going to give you the, the definition related words and the opposites that, that Webster's Dictionary says. And then I'm going to start with Bruce and, and kind of let him kind of launch us forth on this thing. Um, uh, I'm going to read a, a little thing out of, out of the big book uh, first, too. But anyway, um, and let, let me do actually do that that first here in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. There's a couple of things that I, I wanted, and I'm just I'm not going to comment on these. I'm just going to read these. Um, in step three, it says, "Made a decision, made a decision." And we've heard people say, "Well, that doesn't mean you do it. It just means you make a decision." Well, that's poppycock. But that's it says, "Make a decision." Okay, we can talk about that in a minute. Um, to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. Uh, step six, it says, "We were entirely ready, ready." To have God remove all these defects of character. Uh, Step eight says, made made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing, became willing to make amends to them all. And 10 says, continued to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Continued. So what do those words, uh, other than willing, obviously, have to do with with willingness? Um, Well, maybe this will explain it just by the definition that, that Webster's has of the word willingness. Um... It says, the, the quality or state of being prepared to do something, a state of exact readiness. Exact readiness. And here's the related words to that. Um, quickness, uh, speed, speediness, swiftness, dispatch, a promptitude, promptness, eagerness, enthusiasm, 
Um, uh, fervor, gusto, keenness, relish, zeal, zest, agreeableness, good naturedness, heartedness, warmth, open mindedness, receptiveness, and responsiveness. Here's the opposite of willingness Le- uh, leisurelessness, pokiness, slowness, sluggishness, apathy, uh, half heartedness, indifference, lukewarmness, delay, delay. I'm going to come back to that later. Uh, doubt, evocation, hesitancy, hesitation, reluctance, reservation, uncertain, uh, indisposition, recalcitrant, resistant, unwillingness, and aversion. Interesting. So, so I'm gonna I'm I've got to highlight this. I'll, I'll forget, but I want to come back to that word delay uh, here in a little bit. Um, so Bruce kind of launches force on this whole willingness idea. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I love this. <laughs> I think that what I'd like to do is go clean back to the spiritual experience in the appendix. And it's there that In the big they, book, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's there that they find this. Okay. We find that no one need have difficulty with the spirituality of the program. Willingness, honesty, and open mindedness are essentials of recovery, but they are indispensable. So when we're talking about willingness, we're talking about willingness for the spiritual experience. We're talking about open-mindedness and honesty for the spiritual experience. And that's about the steps. Even when it comes down to one day at a time is to be honest where you're at today. You see? Right. And so listen to what it says in step six. It says this, and then I'll try to tie it together. It says, <clears throat> we then look at step six. We have emphasized willingness as being indispensable. Mm. Now, what that might look like, because it's demonstrated by action. You know, and one of the things that we do if we're doing the steps is, are we willing to get up and get dressed and come to a meeting? See what I mean? Yeah. Are we willingness, are we willing to pray to add, ask God for the willingness to go forward when we don't have it? See, they are practicing to come in conscious contact with this higher power and let him demonstrate in your life that he is there, that he'll give you the willingness. How about when you get to nine and you don't have the willingness to go make amends to somebody? Pray for it. See, now you should have been learning this all the way from step three, four, five, six, mm. seven, eight, that to use this willingness and when it's not there to ask God for it. The book just plainly states that too in step 11. When the willingness isn't there. So anyway, that's my take on this. And a lot of people think that it's just something under our own power. But it's about learning to use it to gain the spiritual experience. And the only way you can gain that is to learn to trust him. You know, learn to have some sort of relationship. There's a difference between a belief and a knowing. Never mistake it. Mm, You know, a belief for a knowing. You might believe that I have a pair of sunglasses in my glove compartment that cost $500. Or you might disbelieve it. But you'll never know until you take the steps and go look. It's perfect what he said. Ooh, I know. So, it really is. I got all these visions popping through my mind. So that's that's my take on that. And willingness, listen to what it said, it's indispensable. Willingness, honesty, and open-mindedness. Honest where you're at today, and open-minded becomes humility. Mm. See? So we're becoming, we're, we, we need to be willing so we can... Uh, 
come into this relationship with our Creator. Exactly. So He can do for us what we cannot do. do. Exactly. Ourselves. Right. We're not becoming willing so we can improve on our own intellect. So we could be better chair people at a meeting. Okay. So we can pour the coffee more eloquently. Watch this. This is vitally important. We don't want people to become sponsor, step, or meeting dependent. dependent. Yeah. We're here to teach them to be God dependent. Right. See, and we are guides for that process. We can't do anything. We don't have the power. No, I'm just here to share my experience as I know it. Yeah. But because me and Sandy have been around for a little while, yeah. we we do have a solution. See, you we can pass that along. I mean, think about what God's did. He's taken our worst defect and made it our greatest asset. Yes, my goodness, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Okay, I'm so, going to shut so, up. So, so when, now I'm not talking about a newcomer here. Please do not misunderstand me. I'm talking about somebody that's been around for a good period of time, has actually done the work, gone through this literature, applied it, implemented it, and supposedly, I say that tongue-in-cheek, has had a spiritual awakening as a result of doing this work, Right? And then they turn around and they teach the newcomer that God can be a group of drunks. I listened to a, I listened to a radio show yesterday. I'm not going to mention the name of it. It's a recovery podcast, and they're going off about how, hey, if you want if you want something that isn't has any, doesn't have anything to do with God, go don't go to AA. Go to a secular program. But then out of the same side of their mouth, they turned around and said, but God can be a group of drunks. And I'm like, wait a minute, you just went, you just contradicted yourself. You know, the book says, remind the prospect, I'm talking about the newcomer, remind the prospect that his recovery is not dependent upon people, but is dependent on his relationship with God. That is not a group of drunks. Sorry. And it irritates the heck out of me. Now, what, if somebody's new and that's all they can grasp onto right now is the people in the meeting, I understand that. We shouldn't be bashing them for that. But if you've been around and you're teaching that, something is off. Something is off. And 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 I, I get on my high horse about that because I think we can kill we can kill people. We can kill people if did we're not get, careful. Did he get excited? Oh. But I was one of those ones that couldn't grasp it in no, the beginning. No, but see that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking okay. about you as a new person, right? Yeah, you. We give you all sorts of uh, uh, right. of leverage and, and latitude here. Uh, we have to be able to do that. So, so Bruce, uh, earlier you had pointed out something on page forty six and forty seven in the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, uh, forty six, the last paragraph it says, "Much to our relief, we discovered we did not need to consider another's conception of God." Our own conception, however inadequate, was sufficient to make the approach and to effect a contact with him. Yeah, with, with, with not with me or with the other person, with with him talking about God. Right. Okay. And then over on the other page, it says this. It says, I can't hardly see. But if we wish to grow, we had to begin somewhere. So we used our own conception. However limited it was. See, that's Sandy. That's me. And even the one that <clears throat> believes he was born again or has been a pastor yes. or anybody else. See, no matter how high or how low, we all could start at that point. Right. Right. But I'm going to tell you something that most people want to do. What we should do is do the steps around that around God, around the church. And I think what we'll find out is some of our preconceived ideas and things like that were in the way, blocking us from the sunlight of the Spirit. And the person that knew God forgot how to walk with him. You darn right he and did. And the steps, <laughs> the steps will church. show you how to do that. See, they'll, they'll fit the guy here that hates God or the one that's not sure or thinks they're not inadequate. They're very inadequate. And the one that doesn't understand what took place. Right. Oh, it's right. wonderful. Wonderful. 
Yeah. So if all you if, if all you can do is grasp the idea that a power greater than yourself is people in a collective a consciousness of the same malady and, and and same solution and all that kind of thing in a room, and you're new, bravo. I, I, I mean, you're starting to to see that it, it it can't be you by yourself. That's a good thing. But if your God is the twelve steps. I'm going to challenge you on that, that at some point it has to go deeper than that. The whole point of these steps is to move on from there. Right. Not to keep going back through the steps every year. One, two, three, four, five, six, and twelve. Ah, oh, do it again, do it again, do it again. Not that that's unhealthy, but if you're not growing, not just maintaining, but if you're not growing in your relationship with your creator, then... You really aren't applying those yeah. steps, 10, you're, 11, 12. You're right. The word grow is used there, and it's used in 10, and it's used in 11. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about willingness, Stephanie? Willingness, of course, it had to be willing had to be number one. And I'll tell you what, everything Bruce said is true, like about the sunglasses and stuff. My part in that was because... I was codependent for a long time, and my eyes face outward instead of inward, mm. and I was ready to save everybody. I couldn't save myself, but I sure wanted to save everybody. So I had trust issues just from growing up. I don't know if many people do, but I did, lots of them. Sure. And I struggled, too, with um, the higher power. You know, obviously, a spiritual thing as an individual thing is... Because you and I may not see things the same. I know that a higher power can see me for who I am and meet me where I'm at and understand how I need to be reached and how I need to be cared for because that higher power has been with me my whole life. Like the sun shines on a person. Sometimes we turn our back from the sun. It doesn't mean it quits shining. You know, for a higher power, there is no day or night. Anyway, with the willingness, I had the hardest time in the world trusting and believing that, oh, my gosh, how did you get 15 years worth of like or 20 or 30 or 40 years worth of sobriety when I'm like, I mean, I'm not willing. I don't want to quit at the time. You know, I know it's destroying me. I know that at times when I have a hangover and I'm sick and I'm running my life, yeah. But then at one point, it's like, I can't do it on my own. And the trust thing comes in. I had to trust a higher power and I had to say, oh my gosh, why not just try? I've tried everything else. I've dissected this thing forwards and backwards. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And yes, it's just like I've heard, you know, being in a pit. How long do you want me to talk? Because I could tell you about the pit. Tell us about the pit. Okay. So all the time the pit is changing, just like every time I go through my steps and I learn more and then I do them again, it's like my world gets even more colorful. My goodness, I can smell the flowers almost in my new world. Anyway, 3D, right? Yeah. With color. And we got smoke. Hey, that might be an idea for somebody out there with like 3D. When we get the smells, it re takes us back in memory. Right, I thought right, of that a long time right, ago to pull right. up the TVs. Okay, get on track. Okay, we got this. Anyways, I heard this at a meeting, and it hit home with me, and I've added to it. I've learned a lot from them. I appreciate them with all my heart and soul because they held the door open for when I needed it. And I wasn't there to hold it open for anybody else because I was so selfish. Didn't see the... <laughs> Sorry, it's just a lot for That's me. Okay. I'm just so grateful. Anyway... I was stuck in a pit for real, in the dark, no less. And what do you think I did? I kept digging with my alcoholism and digging, digging, digging. And I'm like, oh, I can't get out. So what do I do? I take another drink and take another shovel full because I'm bored, I guess, or hopeless. I totally hopeless. Anyways, I had people come by and are like, you know, missionaries and stuff. Come on, come on. I'd read the Bible and do this and maybe get a few days in here or there and be inspired and you know, stuff would happen I didn't know how to deal with, and I would go back to where I was. So then I'm still in the pit because, you know, they're up above dropping books in, and I'm reading them. And the next person that comes along the hole hears me crying out once in a while, please help. Mm. 
They are the doctors. And boy, do they like to prescribe you whatever you can. You got depression, huh? You got anxiety? Oh, oh my goodness. You might even be paranoid at times. Do you have panic attacks? Huh? But anyways, all that stuff throwing me down. I'll try it for a while, whatever, you know. I still didn't get to the root problem. Why was I like this? What's going on with me? And then... After doing the pill, I just go back and self-medicate because I kind of knew alcohol wore off after a while and I could kind of go up and down with it, sometimes bad, sometimes good, whatever. And then, thirdly, this alcoholic came along. What do you know? I'm like, they're like, hey, I see you down there. And I'm like, thank God someone actually sees, sees me. Not just like passing by or throwing me something. Sees me. Like I'm real. Hmm. Like who I am, that I'm suffering and I'm falling apart and I'm hopeless. And they say to me, are you okay? I, and I'm like, no. And they said, how willing are you to not be stuck down there? And I said, I'm ready to do anything. I'll do whatever you say. I don't care anymore. I'm willing to die. So I want to try what you have to tell me to get out of this thing. So they jumped down in the hole with me. Oh, my God, are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? We're going to have to pray really hard now. <laughs> that wasn't the case, actually. Yeah. I'm like, what have you just done? <laughs> Don't you know what it's like in here? It's dark. Look, we're in the darkness. And they're like, it's okay. Just take my hand. I've been down here, too, and I'll show you the way out. Yeah. And they took my hand. I was in such a fog. It was still dark and night. And I struggled day and night. Was I willing? That's where I was really tested. Because at times I wanted to. And sometimes I didn't want to. Sure. But then I, for the first time in my life, since 2001, I actually... They say this phone's heavy, right? We talked about this. Yeah. Yeah. Phone's heavy. 500-pound yeah. phone? Yeah. Guess what? took me 15 years to pick up a phone, and it wasn't even 500 pounds. Now, instead of rotary phones, they're just little ones. Yeah, these little light feather things, yeah. It's a pretty amazing thing, really. Yeah, yeah. I still haven't memorized my sponsor's phone number. That was the point of calling them in 30 days. <laughs> so if you get somewhere and you get lost, you can call. Because guess what? I called that sponsor, and I thought, they're going to tell me not to drink. That's not what happened. Come on, let's go have a cup of coffee. Let's talk. I'm like, whoa, do I really want to do that or want to drink? I want coffee. I'm willing. So wow. I realized that my sponsor had a flashlight. Thank God you love me because you are the God of love. And I'm still willing. And with going to meetings and stuff, it keeps her battery recharged. It keeps my battery recharged now for her, too. I'm... I'm I love life. I never not thought that I could ever be in a place where I was could be so grateful that I could just smell and drive down the road and be like, it's beautiful and I feel good. How'd this happen? I'm the worst alcoholic in the world. And you say, maybe you're not. But for me, inside my spirit, my soul, mm -hmm. it, it I am. And there was no one that was going to save me except a higher power that could give me even a spark of love at first for myself. The willingness was the love. Wow. And the trust. That's it. That's all I've got. Well, I'll tell you what, that's that's a lot. Thank you so much. Yeah, I told you to cut me off. No, that was that that <laughs> that was marvelous. That it's was marvelous. the truth. It's easy to be what, honest. What a great share for the Thanksgiving week show. Yep. Yeah. Made me cry that, twice. That just that's screams just gratitude <laughs> like crazy <laughs> while talking about willingness. Mm -hmm. What because I was wondering how we're we gonna tie this together. You just did it. Told you. Yeah. Well, what's cool about that is we got to hear a little bit about Stephanie. Yes, we did. You know, and uh, I think it's important for the audience to know who it is that, that's talking to him and and uh, where she's come from. Yep. You know. Yep. Because it, it gives a little valid, validity, to, validity? Uh, yeah, to her statements about, you know, what it is we're talking about and what's needed. You know, yeah. So if we all want to be there to uh, give that person that hand up, you know, and uh, uh, help pull them out of the hole, 
Pete. I was I I I described it as a room with no windows, and I thought I wanted to be there, but then I didn't know how to get out. Mm. It's yeah. just... So it was, I was locked in that room. But anyway, it it don't want to get off the subject, but I I think it's wonderful to to get that done and let her uh, get her debut. <laughs> I love you guys, and I'm just here. Isn't this as, fun? I'm here yeah. to just tell it like it is, because I can be myself now. I'm not fake anymore. I'm still crazy. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I just don't have that call to blame it on. <laughs> yeah. I, I've got the spirit of love. There, there, <laughs> there must be <laughs> at least four questions that I have because of what she said. Mm-hmm. You know, to to ask her, and uh, maybe we can do those on later shows. Yeah. On the uh, on the air, and you better uh, write those down, Bruce, because I know you. You'll forget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's 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 related with Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm-hmm. I think the questions I have, and uh, those type of things, you know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I, I wonder what we think the method really is, and uh, I think that. We do other things, you know what I mean, instead of following. The steps are such a... Uh, th- let me ask a question to, to Sandy. Yeah. Because she's been sitting over there quiet. <laughs> what are the... I don't mind being quiet. <laughs> yeah. No. What are the we steps do. to you? You want to... want me to talk about the steps? Or what are the, you know, just what, what are the steps? What are the steps for you? Uh, it's an outline for a program of becoming recovered from the uh, <clears throat> obsession and the compulsion to drink and use. Mm-hmm. Um, but I need to say what I want to say about being willing. Okay. Yeah. Because I was pondering. I told Monty I was pondering last night about this. And I ponder, think... Ponder, 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 ponder. ponder. <laughs> and I think there should be a step... 1A, and it should say, be willing, because I truly believe that that book, the steps, uh, the fellowship, none of it, you couldn't get through any of it, I don't think, without being willing. And so that should be your first step 1A. You need to become willing to accept, um, and you need to, it was funny, I looked, I got this little book on all the words with the um, definitions out of the big that, book. That are in the big book, yeah, like a concordance kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. And so I was flipping through that, and willing and willingness had pages and pages. Where, yes. And yes, the other I've ones, seen that. Yeah. Uh, the only one that came close was spiritual. mm but the rest of them, it was two or three pages, 10 or 11 pages. But willing and willingness, it was huge in the big book. So the steps wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't have become, like Stephanie was talking, you're down there in that pit, and you don't believe. What I was thinking about when I was pondering is I did not believe there was a way for me to get out of the pit, period. No way. Mm -hmm. There was no way my life Mm -hmm. was going to get better. Mm -hmm. And someone stuck a hand out. And like I I said earlier, the God thing was very uncomfortable for me at first. But I kept hearing that, let me love you till you can love yourself. You know, and I got on my knees for that third step prayer. And that was when my life absolutely changed. It just changed, period. So, can, I don't know if that answered your question, but can, can I share with sure the step, with the steps? I I had two things happen to me with an awareness of what the steps were. When I came in, I I I thought that the steps were a method in which to deliver me from the illness of alcoholism. What I learned because it was kind of a bait and switch, was they were a method 
to get me in touch with and develop a relationship with the Lord. That's what I what I learned. Mm-hmm. Because if the illness of alcoholism, and you notice they didn't call it a disease. They, they, in the big book, the only time they call it, they don't even call it a disease. They're talking about how, how the, the whole attitude of resentment and everything is. Um, the only word to disease. And it says it's spiritual. Yeah. Yeah, it's a spiritual disease. Um, but but I thought it was it was all to get... So, but if alcohol is but a symptom... The steps aren't there to show me my symptom. They're there to show me my solution. Mm. And that one is God. May you find him now. And so that's what they became to me. But see, I thought something totally different when I walked in. Yeah. I think Sandy's right. I think that's the way the steps look in her life. Mm-hmm. I think and I believe with all my heart that she's done the steps. I think you're right because I, I know you and I, I believe he has done them. And now let me give you my rendition yeah. of what I, I think the steps are. For the first time in my life, it afforded me the opportunity to look at myself and stop looking at you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then when I seen who I was, yeah. it enabled me to go to God with a different heart. Yes. Right. For the first time, I went to God with a contrite heart. And I don't believe he refuses that. In my faith, he says this, that he uh, resists the pride the yeah. and raises the humble. So I needed some humility. And when I went to him, I knew I needed a savior. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to change the core of who I was. That it says in the book that we couldn't get rid of this without his aid, talking about our selfishness. Yeah. So I went to him differently. I went to him with a different attitude. Mm -hmm. See, and I think that's what the steps were all about for Mm. me. Right. See, it wasn't the steps. The steps were the method. The method. By which to get to him. You're so good with words. See, I know what what I want to say, but it never comes out of my mouth. But Sandy, don't you see that, that... you will appeal to someone that I won't, uh, that I can't. Yeah. See, that's what's wonderful about this. Yeah. See, oh my goodness. That's what the wonderful about the diversity. Yeah. It's in the diversity yeah. where the power of God is showing. Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay. So, so let me, let, let me, because we're out of time. So let me bounce back to this word delay. Oh, delay. uh, Which is a word associated with the opposite of the words that are associated with willingness. You bet. Okay. Um, And this this is one of the reasons why we lose so many people in the step process. All right. When I, now, when I, this is just me, when I take somebody through the steps, we do one, two, and three right now. Yeah. One, two, and three right now. Doesn't mean you have to understand God. You got don't have them all figured out. Everything else, but we do one, two, and three right now. Now the way that's all going to play out is in, from four through twelve. But this is what happens in at the end of step three in the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous when it's about ready to introduce you to step four. It says next we <coughs> launched. Launched is an Air Force term that means zero to two hundred in sixty seconds. It means right now. It does not mean delay. You don't close the book, and when I'm working with somebody, I don't close the book and say, okay, now next week we're going to start in step four. We start on step four that day, immediately, because if you don't do it, your chances of this thing working for you drop way down, just like the guy that comes out of jail, right? His chances of succeeding in his sobriety are going to go way up if you can get him hooked up with somebody when he walks out that gate. Well, and Not Bill, when he's got time and it's delayed. Bill and Dr. Bob used to go right into the hospital and sit down on the bed and you do betcha. them all. You betcha. Right there. So I am telling you, if you're out there and you're putting this stuff off, probably the reason you are is either because of fear or because of worldly clamors. Things are getting in the way, right? It's the old story of... I got sober, I got a car, I got a job, I got a, I got a significant other, I got drunk. <laughs> right? You cannot delay. There cannot be slowness, apathy, uh, uh, half-heartedness, indifference, lukewarmness, doubt, uncertainty, reservation, reluctance. 
Mm-hmm. See, it's we hear that we got to take it easy on these guys and let them, you know, give them a break. Yeah. But they, why did why did Bill and Bob go and sit down and talk to him? He said it's better to approach them when they're still stinging a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. When I did my fourth, started on it. And I'm still going through it because there's so many. It was so painful. I told my sponsor, I'm like, I can't. We were going to meet, you know, because I worked on it for a few weeks right after I finished the first three, like you're saying. I actually did it. It wasn't black and white. It actually became living words by me practicing, first of all. And I was in so much pain. Normally, I don't like feeling. A matter of fact, I kind of got to a point where I didn't feel anything. That was kind of the point, right? So... When I did, I can say I got my sense of humor back afterwards, and it wasn't so bad. It was like a burn had just boom, <laughs> you know. I think the choir of angels were singing, "Yeah, we finally got her to do something right." No, <laughs> I'm joking. Well, you guys, we, we uh, unfortunately we're out of time. Yeah, we we got to wrap this thing up. Listen, next week the topic is why do we love to hate the holidays? Because next week we are going to be in December. Why do we love? to hate the holidays. And I'm talking about those of us that are in this process of recovering from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Yeah, as well the as the truth is I do hate that. As, 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 as well as those who have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Those are two different kinds of people now. And we're going to be talking about that next week. But both of us can love to hate the holidays. And there's several reasons for that. And Bruce probably hates that topic. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say I'm truly honored and oh, grateful that I got to spend time with you guys today and do this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so very, very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Our email address is take12radio at comcast.net. Remember to go to take12recoveryradio.podomatic.com. You can download the app. You can download the shows. You can comment. Follow. Click the follow button, please. Uh, it, it helps with our numbers. Listen, until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man, along with Stephanie, along with Sandy, and along with Bruce, and we are wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye now, my friends. This has been a broadcast of Take 12 Recovery Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Happy Thanksgiving for everyone, except for the turkey.